some people think that we can solve our financial problems by stopping fraud, waste, and abuse, or by canceling the Bush tax cuts, or by ending the war in Iraq. The truth is, we could do all three of these things, and we would not come close to solving our nation's fiscal challenges. Here's how bad our situation really is. We already have approximately $11 trillion in total liabilities, including public debt. To this amount, you need to add the current unfunded obligations for Social Security benefits of about $7 trillion. Then add Medicare's unfunded promises, $34 trillion, of which about $26 trillion relates to Medicare Parts A and B, and about $8 trillion relates to Medicare Part D the new prescription drug benefit, which some claimed would save money in overall Medicare costs. Add another trillion dollars in miscellaneous items, and you get $53 trillion. Our country would need $53 trillion invested today, which is about $175,000 per person, to deliver on the government's obligations and promises. How much of this $53 trillion do we have? Zip. By the time today's college graduates are ready to retire, 40 years from now, the only things our government will be able to pay for are interest on the federal debt and some Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid benefits. All other parts of the federal government will be closed and out of business. What about taxes? We would have to raise federal tax burdens across the board, more than two times today's levels, to close the financing gap. Some politicians complain when any tax increases are mentioned. We're facing a more than doubling of federal taxes if we continue down our present path. Remember our debt to GDP? By the year 2040, our debt to GDP will be twice the record level at the end of World War II. And it skyrockets after that. Who's going to lend us money then? No matter what you personally believe should be done to address our nation's deficits, the magnitude of our problem is much bigger than people understand. Let's assume for a moment that all earmarks and special interest pork barrel spending were eliminated. They only represent about 1% of our annual federal spending. What if all three Bush tax cuts expired in 2010? That would only address about 10% of our federal financial hole. And what about Iraq? Even if the war ended in 2009, the total estimated cost of the war over time is less than 3% of our total financial problem. Our budget, savings, trade, and leadership deficits individually are bad enough, but in combination, they create a toxic mix that threatens our countries and our families' futures. As the baby boomers retire in large numbers, this tidal wave of spending will reach our shores, and we are simply not prepared for it. And trust me, it could swamp our ship of state. Unlike many other problems facing our country, this one is ours alone. We can and we must solve this one. The question is, when will we? As our nation's founders said, it's really up to us, we the people.